What's up, I'm Ijema, and this is part one of creating our own tier list in vanilla JavaScript. We're gonna be playing around with the drag and drop API to move around cards across our board, along with the data transfer API so we can transfer information from point A to point B. We're gonna be using common functions from the DOM API to grab hold of certain elements so we know which elements to be dragging around. And finally, we're gonna be using flex to help structure and style our board. By the end of this video, you should have a board where you can pick up a card and then drop it in any other tier. So with that being said, let's jump into the code. So I'm gonna be creating four files for this project. So the first file is gonna be in XHTML where we're gonna be creating our board stylesheet.css to apply some styles to our board. And I'm gonna create two JavaScript files. The first one's gonna be called columns and the second one's gonna be called cards. This is gonna be helpful when splitting up the drag and drop functionality. So in my index.html file, I'm setting up my page with doc type HTML, HTML, um, and then I'm setting my title called my tier list, and then creating a body tag where it's gonna be holding our tier list. I'm gonna import my style sheet with the link tag where I'm setting my relationship to style sheet and the type to text slash CSS. And then my href is gonna to point to my stylesheet.css file. Outside of the body tag, but still inside the HTML tags, I'm gonna import both of my JavaScript files. So I'm gonna import cards and columns. And this is gonna to change to rows because I realized that columns doesn't make sense for a horizontal tier list. So um, if you drop your index.html file in your browser, you should see a blank page. And I'm gonna create a title um, for my page, just call it tier list. So now I wanna style this page up because it's looking a little barren, looking a little famished. So I'm gonna set the font family to courier so it looks a little bit more fun and set the margins of my body to zero so we can get to the absolute edge of our page. And now I'm gonna start creating my board. So I have a div with the ID board and then inside this div, I'm going to create my columns. So for each div, the class is gonna be set to column and then inside columns, I'm going to create labels. So here I have a div with the class label and a label is just gonna be those color corded buckets that label our columns. So now I'm gonna copy all these columns. So we have multiple tiers and I'm gonna change the labels from S to A, B, C, D, and then to F. Oh, not E, not E, F, there we go, sweet. So now we have a pretty barren board. So let's style it up so it's a little bit more clean. So I'm gonna use hashtag board to style my board. So I'm setting my width to 80 VW and what VW stands for is viewport width. And the best way to think of how this works is that viewport width is the entire width of the screen. So when I say 80 viewport width, I'm basically saying I wanna take up 80% of my browser's width. And I'm doing the same thing with height, but instead of VW for width, I'm doing VH for viewport height. And I'm setting the height to 70% of my browser's height. And I set the background color to a deep gray so I can see what I'm dealing with on my white background. Cool. Now I'm going to set up the styles for my columns. I'm gonna set the width to 100% of my board. And I'm gonna set the height to about 13% of my board so there's space in between each of my tiers. And then I'm gonna set the background to a slightly lighter gray for each of my um, columns. So you have something like that. And now I'm gonna set the display of my board to flex and set the flex direction to column. This is where I realized that I should have probably named all of my columns to rows. So I'm gonna set the flex direction to column. So all of my rows sit on top of one another. And then I'm just gonna go throughout my project and change all the instances of column to row. So it makes a lot more sense, but you can name it whatever you wanna name it. Um, this just made the most sense to me. So I also changed my JavaScript file from columns to rows. Cool, cool, cool. So now I wanna create some styles for the label. I'm gonna set the height of my label to 100% of the height of the row. And then I wanna set the width of my label to something that makes sense. Here I'm playing around with 175 and I'm setting the background color to green to see what I'm dealing with but I think I like 100 better. Yeah, I like 100 better, so I'm gonna keep it like that. I'm gonna set the display to flex and set my justify content to center and align items to center. This is gonna help center our text vertically and horizontally. 
And then for my board, I'm going to set align items to center. And I'm gonna also set justify content to space between. So there's space between each of my tiers and I'm gonna set some padding for my board so um, my tiers are up against the edge of my entire board. I'm gonna set the display for my body element to flex and I'm gonna set the flex direction to column. So my title sits on top of my board and set justify content and align items to center. Sweet. So now we wanna create our first card. So I'm gonna create another div element with the class card and I'm gonna set its ID to first. And it's really important to set a custom ID and we'll get to why when we start working with the drag and drop functionality. And then I set the text to high high just so I know what I'm dealing with. And then I'm gonna style up my card a little bit. I'm gonna set the height to 100% of the row. I'm gonna set the width to 100 PX for my card. And I'm gonna set the background color to white and use a display flex to center my text. Ah, but my card isn't sitting properly inside my row. So I'm gonna set the display for my row to flex. So that now sits right next to my label. But this is our board, super basic setup, but this is a great way for us to see how our board is gonna be looking like towards the end. Now that we got our board set up, let's start implementing the drag and drop functionality. So here, when I try to drag, nothing's picking up. So um, the first thing that you wanna do when you're creating a draggable element is that you want to set the draggable attribute to true on the element that you want to be able to drag. We can see that we can pick up the card, which is super exciting, but we can't drop it because there's no functionality, there's no logic behind the drag and drop. So going inside my rows file, I'm going to create a constant called rows and use query selector all to grab all of the DOM elements that have the class row on it. And query selector all is gonna return back an array of all of our rows. So we can use the for each function to loop over each of our rows. So for each row, I wanna set the callback on drag over with my custom function on drag over. So what this line means is that I'm actually assigning row on drag over to the reference of my function on drag over. That's why you don't see any parentheses. It's just a reference to the function. So when the callback row on drag over gets called, it's gonna call the reference to our custom callback function. So here I'm creating a new function on drag over and it takes in the parameter event, which gets passed when the on drag over callback gets called. So I'm gonna call the prevent default function from our event object. The reason why I'm doing this is so that we can prevent any default functionality that comes from when we're dragging an element over another element. This is gonna help us pick up a card and then drop it into a tier. And then I'm gonna create an on drop listener. And here I'm creating an on drop function that's going to be called when a draggable element is dropped on one of our rows. So I'm, again, I'm calling prevent default so we can prevent the default functionality. And I'm gonna print out dropped the element so we can keep track of all the events that are being triggered. So when I pick up my card and I drop it, I can see the console statement dropped the element. So we know that our event listeners are hooked up correctly. So now, so now that we got that cooking, let's move over to our cards JS file. We're gonna get all of our cards the same exact way as we did with our rows. We're gonna call query selector all, and we're going to look for all of the DOM elements with the class name card. And then for each card, we're going to set the on drag start callback with our custom on drag start function. This function also takes in the parameter event. I'm gonna print out dragging the elements so we know that we started dragging our drag element. So here we see dragging the element, and then we see dropped the element. Now I'm gonna set our on drag end callback with our custom on drag end function. So this function is gonna be called when we stop dragging our draggable element. Again, as you could imagine, this function takes in an event, and we're gonna print out ended the drag, so we know when we ended the drag. So we're dragging the element, right? You can see there, and then we dropped the element, and we also ended the drag. So all of our callback functions are hooked up properly. So we know that everything is being listened to. Now we just need to include some functionality. 
So here I want to start using the data transfer API. So what I want to do with the data transfer API is keep track of which card I'm currently dragging. And the way that I keep track of which card I'm dragging is by taking a hold of the card's ID. So that's why it's super important to have a unique ID for each of your cards. I'm going to use the function set data. So I'm going to set the key to ID and then set the value to the event target ID. So event target is the current element that I'm dragging and then I want to grab hold of its ID. So in this case, I'm going to be setting the ID to first. So inside our on drop function, I now want to grab hold of that ID. So I'm going to call event.datatransfer again, but instead of set data, I'm going to call get data. And I'm going to get the ID. So here I'm going to print out the, the current ID that I picked up. So now when I drop the card, you can see that the current ID is first. So we're picking up the correct card. That's good. That's great. So now that we have a hold of the ID, so I'm going to create a new variable called drag card ID. So this is going to have the value of first. And now I'm going to create another variable called drag card, and I'm going to use the get element by ID function, and I'm going to pass in our drag card ID. Now we actually have access to the card element. So now I want to append that drag card into the tier that we're dropping it into. So I'm going to use event.target, and target in this case is referring to the tier that we're dropping our card into, so our new row. I'm going to use the function append child to append a new child element into the specified parent element. So now when I drag my card around, you can see that it clicks into the right row. This is major. We can drag and drop. But this is like that basic, super, super basic functionality for us to be able to pick up a card, which is really exciting. This is, this is kind of fun. One last thing that I want to do in this video is that you notice that when I pick up my card, the card is still in the original tier or the original row. But what I want to happen is when I pick up the card, the card should like be picked up. So you can see here that it's just sticking there until I move it. And that doesn't really feel too nice. So the way that we're going to work with this is going over to our cards file and inside our on drag start function. So we're going to use a set timeout to set our cards visibility to hidden. And the reason why we're using a set timeout, if I comment this out real quick and I refresh the page, so if we pick it up, it will instantly disappear. And even like the drag mirror, the little like image version of the element that we're picking up won't appear either. So inside the set timeout callback, we want to define what is supposed to happen after a certain amount of time has passed. So the first parameter for set timeout is the function that will be called after x milliseconds. And then the second parameter is those x milliseconds. So I'm going to set our milliseconds to 50, so it's pretty quick. So the visibility is going to be set to hidden after we picked it up, so we can still see our drag image. So you can see there, it picked it up. But now when we drop the card, it will just disappear. But you can see here that when we pick it up, the card image is still there. So on drag M, we're going to set our card's visibility to visible. So when we drop it back, it's just going to reappear. So we pick it up, and then we drop it. And you can see here that now it feels like a proper card when we're moving it around. Oh, if we don't drop it in a row, then it will be just shifted back to the last row that we're in. I'm going to create another card. This time the ID is going to be second. I'm going to change the, the text. I'm going to put some emojis to make this a little bit more fun. And we'll use some of my favorite emojis, a grimace. And it's like Regina Hall, you know, with her hands overhead. Yeah, that's the, that's the vibe for that emoji. So yeah, we can handle multiple cards. They overlap one another. They're sortable. So if you want to go above and beyond, like absolutely A plus for part one, you can style the labels. Um, the main thing that I like about the original like tier list is that they have like color coordinated sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an array called colors and I'm going to put this inside my rows file. And I'm just going to like define colors that I want to appear in a certain order for my labels. The most important part is that the amount of colors that I have um, corresponds with the number of labels that I have. So here I have green, aquamarine, yellow, orange, orange, red, and red. So for my for each function, I'm going to expose the index variable. And this is just the current position that we're in our 
array. So here I'm using the function query selector on our current row. And this means that I'm looking for any element that's a child or a descendant of the row element that has the class name label. So I know that I'm dealing with each label in a certain order. So now that I have a label, I'm going to set its background color to the current index of our colors array. So if index is zero, that means that we're dealing with the first label. So we want to get the first color from our colors array, which is green. And we'll go down that array. So we have green, aqua, yellow, orange, beautiful, beautiful colors. So this makes it a little bit more fun, a little, more for the a little bit more exciting. You can play around with the colors however you like. Um, yeah, super simple, super basic. So this was part one to making a tier list. In part two, we're gonna make this board a little bit more dynamic where we can dynamically create cards, update them, and delete them. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please, please, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel. There's gonna be a lot more tutorials and guides on JavaScript and web dev development. And that's it. I will see you guys in part two.